Good, after, good afternoon, everyone. I'm David Mancuso with Mancuso Show Management. And, uh, thank you for joining us at our first Create DIY Festival online. Uh, we're, this is what we call a crossover event. Uh, we, you know, over the years, we have uh, had very, very, very many different fiber artists, textile artists, wearable artists you know, involved with our quilting shows. However, uh, we decided since we're doing all of these virtual shows, we would do a presentation here that basically focuses on, on these different arts that are related somewhat to quilting and textile art. Um, I, I, I have to start by saying if, if uh, you hear these stories about social media and, and how your, your telephone is listening to you, well, I want to tell you it's all true. Uh, I, I'm, I'm an avid uh, Instagrammer and I, ha I have an account and, and um, you know, sometimes you hear these stories that my phone is listening. It, you know, if you're talking about swimming pools with three different people, the next day you'll have, a, uh, you'll have, a, you'll have an advertisement for swimming pools. So I must have been talking about fiber art and textile art because I had um, something flash up in my feed that was a really cool image of a, uh, of a wall quilt, a hanging wall quilt that appeared to be woven. And as I took a closer look at it, I realized it wasn't a quilt at all. It was actually uh, fiber art uh, and it was created by the artist that I'm gonna interview in a few moments and, and uh, so on. And this is how we met him. Um, so we're, we're gonna tell you a little bit about uh, Galen Gibson Cornell and, and then and then we'll we'll introduce you to him and and uh, we'll 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 get this going. Uh, uh, Galen is, is a visual artist working with a practice that combines urban exploration, found material collage, and principles of detourment. We'll get to that word in a minute. An itinerant traveler, he explores cities on foot, studying the layers of urban skin, posters, flyers, paper advertisements wall coverings, uh, signboards. Uh, he then returns to Philadelphia and, and, and he deconstructs these items in his studio, uh, resulting in materials uh, and experiences and, and very, very interesting, just very, very interesting thing coming up here. Um, welcome, Galen. Ah, oh, thanks very much. Uh -huh. Yeah, How I appreciate you? it, David. I'm happy to be here. Great, tell us, tell us where you are right now. Yeah, I'm in Philadelphia um, and I'm in my studio. Okay. Uh, is Philadelphia your home or? or um... It's been my home for about three years. Okay. I'm originally from Missouri um, and I moved to Philadelphia. Yeah. A few, uh, right around three years ago, actually. But during that time I've been able to set up, uh, I've met a lot of great people. Um, you know, I have a really nice studio set up and I, I just feel, I feel really nice here in Philadelphia. What, what brought you to Philadelphia? Anything in particular or? Well, I have some, uh, well, I should say I, I went to graduate school in Wisconsin at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. And that school uh, is, well, it's interesting for a lot of reasons, but one of the main ones is that there's such a huge pool of uh, alums that have spread around the country. So it's kind of a large graduate program. So there's like a, was like a Madison mafia, we call it. And several members of this Madison mafia lived in Philadelphia. And so they spoke really highly of it. Um, their names are Joe and Stacy, Joe LaRue and Stacy Weber, and they're uh, artists in Philadelphia. And they also run a gallery that uh, represents me now. But so those people, and that's called Bertram Productions, but they were a big part of bringing me to Philadelphia. Oh, very interesting. Well, let's get to that word before we continue. Yeah. Uh, de Tourmont. Tell us what that is. It sounds very yeah. French. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a French <laughs> word. And yeah, I, I use that word because I think it's very specific. It's exactly what I'm doing uh, in a kind of academic way if I'm thinking about what I'm doing. Um, so that word détournement, is, um, it comes from the French word of, of, it sort of relates to our word detour, which is to, to, to turn something around in a different way. So let's say that uh, that word comes from a, uh, an art movement called the Situationist International. Um, a number of artists were, were maybe tired of making new works in the world. Like they, they, were, they thought that the world had enough material in it. And so instead of trying to create like a brand new painting for them, their idea was to, to collect materials in the world and twist them. So sort of insert content in a way that could make them, uh, you know, it could build a creative practice out of finding and twisting and re 
re-releasing. So I, I think that's, that's totally what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sort of finding things in the world and repurposing them with a laborious process. So yeah, day tournament. tournament. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'll, get, yeah. I'll get that right. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I have to look it up anyway. Yeah. Uh, so like you'll take a little uh, tour through your studio while I ask you a few questions. Um, yeah. I mean, how, how long have you been involved in this? Uh, did it start with a different medium or did you just go right to this? Well, I have, I would say that I've been working directly with street posters for about 10 years. Um. I have, I think we can we'll probably get into this a little more, more later, but I have a background in printmaking. So these old processes of uh, printing onto paper. So building a, a, what we call a matrix. That's something that you uh, draw or design like a woodcut or a screen print, and then you print it onto paper. And this process of printmaking led me into being interested in posters. And uh, because posters used to be printed in the same old, manners of lithography or etching or screen print that I was studying. And I was also a big fan of history. I started um, uh, researching like the history of Europe in a lot of ways. And so I started finding that, um, you know, like posters somehow like turned into propaganda in some cases, turned into other like mass media strategies. And so I got really interested in the, just the nature of posters that got glued up everywhere. And, and not even just like the Toulouse-Lautrec posters that you'd see in a museum either. I, I was interested in like the actual deployment of the posters on a wall somewhere. And especially given that like, let's use an example of like Paris. In Paris, those walls have been around for so many centuries that I'm just like, my brain just imagines the many millions of posters that have been glued up over the lifetime of like a cathedral wall or something. And that just got a really interesting mental exercise. And then, so then, I, you know, I'd travel and then I would go and see a wall in Paris with like, you know, Radiohead posters on it. And that would just make me think about the history, you know. <laughs> that's, so. that's, that's very interesting. So, so that you, you, do you take some of these items and when, when you say deconstruct, what, what is the, what is that process to make this beautiful wall hanging? Yeah. Well, so I, I, uh, when we can talk about the traveling also, but the it's important for me to be in other places to sort of travel around and, and explore. But when I'm exploring, I, yeah, I try to collect street posters. Um, I have some rules about it. Like often I don't collect posters when they're political or when like some other person, like a creative person has made a poster. I'm not interested in like interfering with street art or with politics, but the, the things I'm interested in are like, posters that are very clearly about like uh advertising it's kind of like the the things that are impeding on your space like the the large like ads that we didn't really ask for but show up in the space i'm interested in pulling those down um and so basically like i have my own reasons for collecting posters but when i choose to i you know, try to pull them down throw them in a backpack and take them back home to the studio um it's happened before that uh, you know, I, maybe I found this happened to me in Budapest. Um, there was this like concert for a DJ that was uh, happening in a club in Budapest, but my, my project then was to go around the city and pull down every one of those posters to sort of like counteract the, the ad campaign or something. Um, his so his show still sold out. So I don't really think I did a, a dent necessarily but but anyway so then that's that was like one strategy for me to collect a whole bunch of posters and then back in the studio that's just raw material for me so i start slicing and weaving and so yeah. so have you ever have you had anybody in custom say what's in here <laughs> yeah actually a few times in an airport people like look at me strange but it's just you know it's just paper <laughs> so it sounds like travel is a big part of this so so where is yeah. it taking you where, where is this uh, taking you, your art? Well, the yeah, yeah, I guess it, I guess I can start from like where it, where it all began, which is, um, I guess I was, I grew up in a, in a small town in Missouri called Maryville, which is a great little town. I had a nice childhood, but I, uh, I just had a lot of curiosity and I read a lot about Europe, especially. So the first chance I got, I did a study abroad in France. Um, and then after that kind of like, 
fever took over. Then I just started traveling as often as I could and mainly back to Europe, back to other cities. Um, and so, yeah, of course, France to begin with, I traveled a lot in Italy to begin with. And then, um, after, well, while I was in graduate school, I got in a, I got a small grant to go poke around in Europe and travel a little bit. So I ended up going to uh, Prague and Budapest uh, and, and uh, Belgrade in Serbia. These kind of, I was like trying to follow the Habsburg empire for some reason. I just, you know, designed that up as like an itinerary and Budapest started uh, sticking out to me really, really nicely because it's a, it's a fascinating city. So I, I just got like kind of hooked on Budapest, this kind of like central Eastern European city. And I ended up uh, spending a year there as a Fulbright fellow um, doing a project specifically about political posters. And then from there, I got also hooked in Berlin. There's posters everywhere in Berlin. It's a really interesting place. Um, and so, and I would go back to Berlin a few months every year. I kept going back to Budapest. Thrown in there, I, I ended up having a residency in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, and then I most recently was in Bulgaria. So I've been kind of like pushing farther east in Europe, trying to get to some other places. Well, it, it's a, it's official. I'm totally jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I have to real, I'm not going to even compare my travel itinerary with that. <laughs> that's actually some really wonderful stuff so I, I, I guess your creative process starts right there when you're looking yeah. at these this paper it doesn't necessarily start in the studio right right and and you know like well I took some Fr I took some French language classes in school and you know the 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 lesson that they told us was like you can't learn the language without understanding the culture so let's teach you the culture that's the kind of methodology that I use when I'm uh, working with these posters is, well, I can't understand the, the actual, like, full, I can't understand the, the totality of these posters unless I understand the culture they're coming from. So, you know, when I, let's, let's say most recently when I was in Bulgaria, my, uh, I basically used research time to walk around and explore and try to read books about the, you know, what's going on. I met people so yeah, it's like I, I try to go and swim in the waters a little bit, and that way there's I have some sort of connection to the posters that I'm going to end up working on. So so tell tell us a little bit about the process. Is this basically weaving fiber art? And what what what, what category? I know I know it goes into the yeah. original category we spoke about, but but is this? Would you say this is a weaving process more than anything? Yes, I call it a weaving process, but that said, I don't have any training or official background in the, like all of the colors that are weaving. And so, I, it's it's basically what I understand is a kind of a over-under um, And generally, it's, for me, it's just one strip of paper woven into another strip of paper. So yeah, I'm looking at this on the screen and it's absolutely amazing to me. I mean, how, do you work with it wet or, or is it, is it, 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 to me, it would be very difficult not to rip it. Or... Yeah. Yeah. It gets ripped sometimes, but then again, they they begin as paper that I've ripped off a wall anyway. So, right. you know, so, yeah, any so... extra rips or not, yeah, they don't ruin anything. Yeah. So the, they, um, yeah, it's all dry. I mean, although the, the, the you mentioned what, like if the, I work with the posters wet, there's a point in the process where they need to be wet, which is that since they're glued up to a wall with wheat paste, uh, if they're not wet, they're very difficult to remove. So often I have to remove it the to be able to pull off the posters. They use... Material? They use most municipalities use uh, wheat paste, just like cheap, no, okay, cheap right. glue, and then they just slather both sides of the poster and what, stick what it. What I up. meant is, what are you backing them on when you're, yeah, so, when you're creating? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the way that I display them is that I use little standoffs. So, um, especially when we're looking at that gallery show, um, the the pieces are sticking off the wall two inches each. And so I actually fix magnets to the back of the weavings. And then I have a, an aluminum tube 
and a nail that, or and a screw that goes through uh, with a magnet on the end. And so there's all these little posts on the wall and then the piece that has magnets glued onto it just clicks up to the, the posts. So they, they hang freely a couple of inches off the wall. Um, they're they're yeah, amazing. I magnets. can't tell you how much they resemble really, you know, good quality, uh, what we call um, wall quilt or quilt art. Yeah, and, oh, thanks. And, uh, and very innovative. If, if you were to put this as a quilt into, into one of our competitions, it would go into the innovative category because they're very uh. innovative. And, and, and so, so um, tell, tell me, uh, tell us, do, 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 you, do you teach? I do. Um, I teach printmaking uh, and especially lithography. So this kind of old process. Oh, I, I know lithography. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. Old lithographs are wonderful. Right. So, so, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and so I, 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 yeah, I'm really attached to like techniques, basically like being a, a like a master craftsman as well as somebody with ideas. So uh, yeah, I, I kind of, Although, like I said, I don't have a, a background in traditional weaving. I've sort of find myself in that conversation, um, like through another technical path. And I found that really interesting. Would you consider, would, 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 have you ever considered teaching this actual art? Is working with paper and working with the posters or working with found material? I have actually, because it's one of the ways that I see the future of teaching, which is like, live streaming or, uh, you know, I feel like th there will be a market soon for people to yeah, earn a living, let's say, just showing like videos of them doing whatever that whatever it is that they do well. So I have considered definitely like, sort of teaching from my own studio about what I'm doing. Let's say or that could also be just entertaining, I guess. But yeah. Well, great. C consider this. We'd like you to teach this technique ah, cool. uh, through Mancuso Show Management at one of our upcoming virtual events. You can consider that an invitation. So as soon as ah, you have your great. class material together, yeah. ah, we'll have I'd Diana to. reach out to you. <laughs> she, does, yeah. she does all of the, the bookings for the instructors. And I'd like that. Yeah, yeah that's that, really that cool. That would be great. I, I, it, it, is, it is amazing to us. Um, some of the, yeah, this is like I say, this is our first attempt at this create, and it's amazing to us the interest in it and 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 the interest in very different things. Um, yeah, yeah. How how does someone go about seeing and or buying your work? Oh, I have a gallery. Um, so yeah, I mentioned before, but they're they're called Bertrand Productions, <laughs> and so my work is all for sale through that gallery, and um, they, you can go to their website bertrandproductions.com or if you go to their Instagram they have a link to the, the online store. So it's all set up online, but also, you know, you can make appointments and come see the gallery as well. Very nice. So yeah. what, what other, what artists do you, insp well, I guess the word that would be, do you admire? What are artists do you admire, whether, whether um, contemporary or, or, or in the past? Yeah, well, so there are a couple of artists that are um, always in my, headspace like in terms of contemporary art and it, especially relating to the things I'm doing. So there's somebody named Mark Bradford that is kind of a, he's obviously very well known, um, but he works also with street posters in a way like flyers and sort of street paper. Um, he comes from LA. He's got a very different sort of like way of working with these things, but it ends up being like a sort of relative to what I'm doing, I think. And he's always very inspiring to me. Um, I have kind of a favorite artist whose name is Gabriel Orozco, um, a Mexican artist that works in all kinds of media, like in photographs or in also sort of making these little moments happen. Um, but he just has a real cleverness to his work and kind of like a, a traveler's ethos that I really respond to. He's, is he also a contemporary artist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the one of the pieces of his that like to, to illustrate maybe what I like about that guy is he did an artwork uh, recently. Actually, one of my one of my artworks in that show we walked through uh, actually shares a title with an artwork that he did called Asterism. He, he like uh, 
found two locations. One is a soccer field on one of the piers in in uh, Manhattan and then also a beach in Mexico. But he collected like thousands of small, just detritus pieces of trash from the soccer field and also from the beach and then brought them all into like a constellation on the, in the gallery, just these little found objects. And there's a lot of imagination there, like, you know, sort of taking bits of the elements that are unwanted or trash like and putting them into a scenario where they have a lot of meaning then. Very interesting. Uh, oh, so I'll, I'll go I'll go off the map here a little bit uh, as far as antiquities are concerned, artists of the past. Is there anyone that you uh, admire? Or? Yeah, I love there's this guy, uh, Honoré Daumier, who's a French artist in the I don't know what kind of what, what, what date he was around, actually, but it was like King Louis Philippe in, in, in France, so like post post Napoleon and everything, but he was making these lithographs. It's probably the 1800s. Uh, he was, he was a lithographer, but he would make these like satire drawings and then, uh, you know, poke fun at the, at the King basically, and then publish these newspapers with his drawings. And then they would, the, you know, the, the police would come and arrest him and break up his shop. And then he'd get released after a month or so and just do it again. You know. <laughs> So oh, I know a few people like that. Yeah. Right. So, but, what's your favorite yeah. country? Where's a little bit of traveling? My <clears> favorite, <throat> favorite. My favorite country. Well, I have a real deep connection to France. Uh, actually, you can see a French flag in my background there. Yeah. Probably yeah. because that's the very first place that, like, really, you know, really touched me. Um, and I, I can speak French from my from my studying, and then also from living there. And you know, I had a pen pal back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a really deep connection to France, but then I think my, my connection to Budapest is equally strong. So I, I really feel something uh, really deep with Budapest and Hungary. Um, yeah, there's just something like, they just seem so like proud, but forgotten in a way. Like they just sort of, did, they feel maybe left out of a lot of international conversation, except, except some political things now. I don't know. I, yeah, I just like, I just really enjoy like trying to get into um, other cultures, I guess. I, I'm, I'm amazed at your travel experience at, uh, such, a, at, such, at such a young person. I, 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 I um, l l let me ask you, um, all that traveling, you have to have one good, really crazy story you can tell us. I always uh, ask yeah. everyone this question because travel always comes into crazy stories. I, I do actually, <laughs> and it has actually to do with my poster collection, um, which is also a question that a lot of people ask me is, you know, who gets upset when you're taking posters? You know, like, do you ever run into police or any kind of backlash if you're ripping things off a wall? And I did actually in a, in a, a light but terrifying way. Um, when I was, uh, I was in Serbia and I was collecting photographs and posters for what was to become my MFA show. So a pretty important like terminal project for my studies. Um, there was an, a political election coming up in Serbia and the figurehead of one of the political parties was this one guy named Sheshe, Vojislav Sheshe. And he is kind of at the time was sort of in the news a lot for being locked up in prison on war on like war crime charges but they hadn't been proven yet so he was kind of in limbo in the hague in in sort of un prison but he was still acting as the head of this political party and so his face was on posters everywhere and it was a real kind of hot button issue for people so I, the people i met in serbia were like this is like <laughs> this is so crazy <laughs> like why anyway uh i didn't really know anything about that at the moment. So I just saw this guy's face everywhere. So I started taking posters and mm -hmm. taking photographs. Um, and I found one building that was covered in the posters. So I started collecting a whole bunch. Well, it turned out that was the uh, party headquarter building <laughs> in the town of Novi Sad in Serbia. And so, uh, you know, a, a guy came out and started like really viciously screaming at me and started like charging. And so I just dropped everything and ran. <laughs> You could, have, you could have ended up in a Midnight Express situation yeah, I, if you've ever seen that old movie. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want any part of that. Locked I don't up know. Abroad, right? 
Well, yeah, this, this has been uh, very, very informative, and, and uh, <laughs> I think people would really be interested in what I'm, I would say, uh, fiber weaving. And, and oh. um, you know, again, we, we'd love to uh, work with you again in the future. Uh, I'd uh, love that. Yeah, for joining us. You have anything else you'd like to say? Or... Oh well, actually, on the on that topic, I, I um, the idea of uh, yeah, I guess I still just have some thoughts on like the the what I do as opposed to like traditional weaving so that's something i think about a lot uh, mainly in finding similarities because yeah I, I use paper to begin with but when i think about paper especially like the sort of fine papers that i'm used to sort of printing on is that they're made generally from cotton fiber and so in in a certain way that paper is already a textile let's say in, in some some fashion and so I really do think that there is some like there's some connection between the we slicing and weaving of paper that I do and maybe a traditional uh, woven piece. But but one of the maybe one of the interesting kind of like distinctions is the I, I guess I would I would imagine that most people when they're generating like a weaving pattern, they they're forming an image themselves, you know, like the like the jacquard. Uh, idea or anything else is like you you just take string that or or you know fiber that doesn't have intrinsic meaning and combine it into a pattern um but but i notice what i'm doing myself is that i take something that already has a meaning and actually i'm trying to like scramble it a great a great deal of the people that are watching this presentation work with fabric yeah. So, so may, maybe you could sway them over to trying a little bit of the, of yeah. the, of the fiber yeah. end of it. And maybe, maybe we'll see you working with fabric. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the idea of our crossover here. So. Right. 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 Well, again, but, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, I appreciate uh, it. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be back this evening uh, with uh, another presentation. And uh, again, thank you and um, enjoy.